There we go. All right. So I'm going to do a quick recap, uh, Marcel. Did you watch uh, the, the live last week or the recording of part one? No. Okay. So uh, what I'm doing here, and this is great. See, now I've got somebody to speak to directly, which, which leverages and motivates me. Uh, just hi, Bina. Give Bina a chance to say hi as well. Uh, Bina is joining us. Yeah, so yes. please shout, hello, Bina, Marcel. jump in any time. Of course, you know all this. So, yeah, yeah, Bina. Oh, yes, yes. Bina. hello, Marcel, and hello, Sil. Thank you so much for doing this again in more detail. Yeah. So, yes, we are all excited about this. Let's yeah, continue. Very cool. Very cool. All right, so what I'm, what I'm sharing in the overview is how to take, uh, well, specifically, it, it applies to Wave Impeccability and Mourners Courses programs, um, but it also can apply to any program or course you're doing, or even if you're just learning on your own, whether you're reading a book, watching a video, it doesn't matter. These are all mechanisms which facilitate learning. So it's about learning how to learn. That's what the overall theme is. So last week I went into, uh, and I'm just going to page through this as I describe what I did last week so that anybody watching the replay can pause and read this, the, the slides if they want to. So last week I went through all of the, uh, the, the, the promises that I make to potential participants. Now these are, I call them promises simply because I'm a bit humble and I don't want to be arrogant, but really what these are, all of the things that are coming up in the, in the promises here like these, these have come from things that participants have actually experienced, right? So these aren't necessarily promises, they're actualities, however, when going through these, the value of it was to say, oh, peace of being. Oh, oh, wow. That's what I want. Make a note. Because as you go through this deliberate living, hells, bells, I never even thought of deliberate living. To deliberately live, this is, this is a whole, wow, wow, that blows my mind. Right? Well, for me, deliberate living is a huge deal. So the value of these promises is for you to connect and notice and pay attention to what resonates with you. Right. So there's a lot of them here. This is what I went through last week, Marcel. So uh, again, the value here is to pay attention to them and see what connects and resonates. Because then you also know why you are interested in, in life change, in self change, in learning, in growing. You really connect to what you want. And when you know what you want, now everything starts to connect to that. Now, this is a big deal and it goes into how the brain actually learns. And we're gonna go into that in part three, the actual underlying specific brain mechanisms. But if you know what's important to you and you can connect it to what you're learning, everything becomes pertinent and relevant. And then this is huge. All right, so this is where we stopped last week. And I just want to read this a little bit as an introduction for what's coming. It's kind of the end of the, the promises section. It's a little bit more, but this is a very cool, it's a little excerpt from a very cool story. The story is called Sophie and the Philosopher. And this is an excerpt about Sophie the Sophisticated. But I know I know little. I also know I am more. One thing I am not going to do is be influenced by the philosopher. Nope, 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 nope. That's why I am Sophie the Sophisticated. I will not be influenced. However, I cannot be blind to the mourners the philosopher promises. Now, I am going to be receptive. I am going to take for granted what the philosopher has to share makes sense. I'm going to be open to seeing sense beyond what I can see now. I know my imagination is limited. I know my knowledge is limited. I'm going to trust the philosopher makes sense. I am going to trust without trusting. I am going to trust it makes sense. But this does not mean I am so the sophisticated. That just because it does make sense, it does not mean I have to be influenced. No, I do not have to be. I can choose to be. Not only can I choose to, but I have to choose. I have to choose to decide whether or not I wish to take on what I know. So I am never influenced so that it's always my choice what I absorb, absorb what I make my own. Even if it might be all of it, doesn't matter. Always it needs to be a choice. 
This is Sophie's sophistication, her profound receptivity. She is never influenced. She always does maintain her independence of being. Yet, she changes profoundly at the same time. What a magical story. Yes, it's a very magical story. Marcel, let me ask you here. How does this connect for you? What what the story is saying here with Sophie? Does does it connect? Any relevance for you? Thank you for having me. So pleasure, um, mate. Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. It reminds me of um, the Alchemists by Paulo Coelho. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. It's it's also uh, the Alchemist. I actually have a program on the Alchemist where we go into depth in detail on it. it's a very long program obviously go through the whole book and we unpack it we discern it we unravel it uh, we look at some of the stuff that it's like mm, Paolo well mm, and other stuff that hey this is really cool <laughs> there's a lot of odd stuff in that story too by the way <laughs> oh yes yeah. but it's a cool it's story yeah. beautiful yeah it's, it's yeah. a very intricate balance between the Alchemist and then Celestine Prophecy and then Waldo Yes, yes, they all connect together. Correct, correct. Yeah. All connect together. Ah, that's very cool. Uh, you know, all of this stuff, the, the reason why I bring this up here is because um, in, in, in what I do, and I want to make this a point, not just because I emphasize it, I feel it's incredibly important, but I think it's for anything. Anytime you are doing a course or a program, you don't want to be influenced. You say, but isn't that why I'm doing it? Uh, yes, kind of. But if you are influenced, it's not your choice. And that changes the nature of how you take it on. If you are influenced just because it's coming from outside and, you know, this is somebody famous or wonderful or supposed to be, then it's not yours. But Sophie is very sophisticated. She, so she says, even if it all makes sense, I'm still not going to be influenced. I'm going to choose it all deliberately and make it my own. And this is a profound, profound, profound necessity if you want the learning to stick. Yes, because if you don't make it your own, you are taking on something that is somebody else's. And we cannot live somebody else's life. Not possible. Not possible. If you don't make whatever you learn your own, it's never going to be yours and it will always be something secondhand and it's never going to be really deep and it's never going to be innate. It will come from memory and this is a poor mechanism for living to live by memory, right? Very, very, not very effective. All right, so uh, let me ask you this, right? When you want to ride a bicycle, if you try and remember the instructions and go and ride your bicycle, that's not going to really work, yes? <laughs> you have to How actually remember the actual feeling of riding the bicycle, right? Because if you just remember the instructions, you have to basically continue relearning it. You don't own that. But when you know how to ride a bicycle, you get on and you ride. That's it. End of story. You don't have to remember the instructions. But this is how we treat learning for the most part in the same way. You know, it sits in memory. It doesn't become innate because it's somebody else's. When you make it your own, it goes inside you. So this is a very, very, very big point. I, I, I go into it in the various programs that I, my, uh, that I do. Um, but this is an important point to understand. In other words, if somebody's asking you to believe them, be cautious. Very, very important point, right? I don't ask anybody to believe a word I say. As a matter of fact, I tell my participants to say, please do not believe me. And if I notice that they are kind of just believing me without thinking it through, checking, making it their own, I'll say, whoa, 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 whoa. I'll, I'll point it out. It's not a good thing to believe others, you know, because people say a lot of nonsense and they may be well-meaning, but still be talking a lot of nonsense. So it's very important to make it your own. That way it's real. It's yours. You own it. You've changed. Yes. Make sense? Marcel? 100%. Very cool. Very cool. All right. So here were a couple of extra promises. Again, you can, you know, pause the video and go over them. This is just left over from last week. Uh, uh, stuff that we're going to be doing and we'll get we'll touch on some of these um, um, as we go through what's coming up so this is just something I have on the website I just like the the shape of it you know <laughs> all the things I do I, I like stuff like that it's kind of fun all right so let's get to this week so now when you get into and you're going to start a new uh, program or you're going to start your own learning or you're going to come and do wave impeccability doesn't matter 
If you're going to do way of impeccability, this is what I'm going to ask of you. This is what's required. This is what you're going to agree to do because in order to do this, you've got to do it as intended and then you get the full value. So you have nine tasks of doing that all the participants need to do, right? Number one is self-honesty and honesty. This is absolutely critical. If you're going to go into any learning and you are doing it, well, I want to learn this so that I can show off how much I know. Well, forget about it. You've got a different intent. You're not really going to learn, right? You, you, you're you just going to put stuff in your memory and then you've got stuff to regurgitate. Do you really know what it's about? Not necessarily, right? Furthermore, the honesty that you do need to learn, very important. The honesty and the self-honesty that you can learn, very important, right? So a lot of people come into programs and courses and they struggle to learn because they they basically have confidence and they think they know what's going on in the world and they do and they successful, especially when I have participants who are coaches um, because I have that, you know, and the program is very much geared and designed to really facilitate people who are coaches. It takes them to a whole different level. But now they come into it and suddenly they, they, they're like, Holy moly, you know what? I kind of thought I knew what was going on, but wow, wow, wow. There's a whole lot of stuff that I never even considered, never even thought of. And that leads to a bit of a worldview collapse, right? Because now the old world has suddenly become much bigger. Now, not everybody handles this well. Sometimes very stressful and very traumatic. But that self-honesty needs to be there to say, hey, I'm encountering things that I didn't know. That just means I need to learn. Doesn't make me stupid. Doesn't make me ignorant. Doesn't mean I'm small, little. No, none of that. That's all ego nonsense. Just be honest. Eh? If you learn, you learn. If you don't know, you don't know. Right? That's very simple. But it's very crucial because I see how this limits people's knowing. And also, they don't want to ask stupid questions, which they think are stupid. There's no such thing as a stupid question. Right? So when we come to something that we don't know, but we think we should know, that's when you've got to exercise that self-honesty and the honesty to ask. This happens. We follow different paths in life. We don't always see everything on the, the paths that other people have, 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 have walked and, and seen. So we miss sometimes. It's like, okay, I wasn't at school that day. I didn't get that. Didn't see that memo. Got to ask. Very, very, very critical. So I'm going to go all through all these in details. This is just the program content. So let's go here to self-honesty and honesty. Uh, but before I get started on the detail here, yeah, um, uh, any questions, any any comments, any people joining, anybody I need to say hello to, Bina? Yes, uh, we have Norma here, we have Sher here, we have Ryan and Janelle here. Uh, but I have a question about this. Uh, Excellent. Uh, hold you your mentioned. question, please. Hold your question. I just want to say hello, Norma. Hello, Ryan. Hello, Janelle. And hello, Sher. Magical, magical, magical. Ah, I'm so thrilled you. Yeah, very cool, very cool, very cool. Yeah. Okay, right, cool. so when, when you mentioned that, that this course is uh, basically uh, geared towards uh, coaches and uh, life coaches and other people. Not, not are only. Already in this. Yeah. Yes, but okay, just geared towards them also. Yeah. Uh, so I just want to know that, that is it something that mostly coaches and uh, uh, instructors and gurus and all these people, they have already, they already have all those information and their own things. No. It's still no. when they have already developed their courses or programs, is still this course is going to be beneficial for them? Oh, absolutely. Oh, oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Well, because, uh, you know, as you know, many of the participants have done tons of programs elsewhere. Repeat backs, takeaway, yes. dictionary of power. These things are not part of programs typically. So, yes, this is something really that's going to make a big difference. And there's more that we're going to share in next week in the underlying psychology of learning that also is not necessarily known, right? So uh, this emphasis on honesty and self-honesty, that's not so something I don't always see because people don't want to chase away pot uh, potential clients or participants. Uh, you know, when you tell somebody, hey, you know what? I really expect and demand that you be self-honest and honest. They may take that the wrong way, um, you know? And if they do, well, from my point of view, then you're not ready to do this because if you're not ready to be honest and open that you need to learn, then you're not really going to learn. You can have a hard time learning. It's as simple as that. So yes, this will help anybody who has their own programs and courses tremendously. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, why is this not only for that? You say, no, it's principally for 
anybody, anybody who's keen on learning and growing and seriously changing their life. In order to do that, you need to become your own coach. And we'll get into that. It's a very big part of it. You need to learn how to really coach yourself. If you can't learn to learn, then you're going to struggle to learn. We have this belief, this idea that uh, if we find the right teacher, they'll teach us. In other words, I can just sit back and, oh, well, thank you very much. You know, I just have to listen to you, basically. You're going to teach me. I don't have to do anything. It doesn't work that way. This is a myth. This is a myth. Yes, good teachers can make it easier for you to learn. They can facilitate your learning. They can assist you in learning, but they cannot give you learning. You have to do that on your own. Yeah, you have to do that on your own. Make sense, Marcel? Yeah. You're on the ball. Yes. <laughs> All right, Marcel, please feel free to jump in anytime. I mean, you can interrupt me. It's not a problem. I have the, the skill to to pick up where I left off. It's it really doesn't it's not a problem at all. I I I, I really welcome those interruptions. And this goes for anybody. Um before I get going on this particular slide here and get started, Bina, do me a favor and just message Donna to let her know okay. that we are starting. Because she was keen to come okay. and uh, she may just have the time uh, um, mixed up. Okay. So very cool. Very cool. Okay. I'm, I'm I'm keen to have Donna yeah. I mean, she may be just doesn't have said hi. You know, we don't always see who's there if they don't say hi. So this is another reason that I really like it when you guys say hi. I know who's there. And, you know, I, I, I feel like I'm talking to you if you're there. And it helps me a lot. So very cool. Very cool. Um, I was going to say oh, also for anybody listening, ask your questions. I know Bina will pass them on to me. I can't see the screen, but she will pass them on to me and it does help a lot. It, it, it's, it's very cool to hear. Or oh, comments too. So uh, that, that, uh, that interactivity is a big deal, right? So, so please, please comment, ask questions. So can I actually, can I ask a question, please? Always, that's what I'm saying. <clears throat> Jump in any time, ask. Come on now. Related to this particular thing, self-honesty, right? Um, how does one know if they're not being honest with themselves? That's a fabulous question. You see why I love questions? That's a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous question. This is probably one of the most fundamental core philosophical problems that ever existed. <laughs> there isn't necessarily an easy way. The only way I would say to really know whether you are being self-honest is to pay attention to your conscience which is a huge part of impeccability. We focus very much on this. So if you're a little bit awkward, a little bit uncomfortable, doesn't quite add up, then you have an idea. Now, I want to emphasize, self-honesty is about taking care of what you believe to be the truth. Now, does that mean that you're actually going to be accurate? No. Because you can believe in nonsense and I'm being honest about my nonsense. I believe I know, right? So part of the self-honesty and why I make a point of it here and as we're going to go into it with receptivity is to say, I may think I know, but well, now that you mention it, mm, I have to be honest and say, well, when I think about it, do I know everything? No. Is there a possibility I might be mistaken? Well, yes. So part of this honesty and self-honesty is paying attention to questions that you might otherwise have taken for granted. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So in, in why I've said it is a doing. Yeah. See, if we go back to this, right, we've got nine tasks of doing. Yeah. And I put it in, in a group like this so that you can remember I've got nine things I need to do. Number one, when you, when you can lump things together and categorize them in a heading, it's easier to remember, by the way. So that's also a mnemonic trick there. One is the self-honesty because part and parcel of self-honesty is going to be this, to be truly capital R receptive. And receptive needs to be in italics. This is where I make my programs, by the way. I mean, I can go and show it like this. Um, but as I go through things, <laughs> I like to I like to uh, update them if 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 they need it sometimes, like this case, right? So to truly be capital R receptive, we have to first assume what we come into contact with makes sense. As a default, 
even though we can't yet see how. Ah, this is, I, I cannot emphasize how huge a point this is. You say, whoa, 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 wait a second, wait a second. You know, there's so much nonsense in the world. If I go around saying uh, things I come into contact with by default make sense, uh, man, holy moly, uh, this is going to really get me into lots of trouble. However, there is, a, we, we have to apply some, you know, sensibility here and a bit of default. I'm not saying go and do it with everything, but when you are coming into contact with something that you are looking to learn, this is absolutely critical that you by default assume it does make sense. Because if you do not give that, that description, that understanding to newness, if the thing that is coming to you is outside of what you know, it's going to stay outside of what you know, right? If you don't assume it makes sense, it's going to be unknown, it's going to be unintelligible, and you won't be able to connect to it. It's really fascinating. There are many studies, actually, of when people physically, literally perceive things that are outside of their experience. They cannot literally, physically actually see the things because they can't conceive of it, they can't comprehend of it. So it doesn't exist for them, right? So, in, in this case, the, in, especially with the things that I do and that I share, sometimes the conception, the point, the understanding, the deepness of it is just outside of people's reality and experience. And if they not have this openness to assume it makes sense, they can't figure it out because they've already shaped their world. They've described it as something that doesn't and therefore, well, it's just nonsense. And then they miss it, right? Very, very, very huge, huge point. Again, it touches uh, the receptivity is under honesty and self-honesty. We have to be honest that there are things that are going to surprise us, things that are going to seem confusing at first, like, what in the hell is this guy still talking about here? Man, holy moly, this makes no sense whatsoever. But, but, but let me assume it makes sense and see if I can't reverse engineer it, right? So let's take, for instance, the crash sh spaceship. And and we say, we go and we look at the engineering of it, right? Makes no sense to our engineers, none whatsoever. They say, what on earth is going on? What the hell is this? this, this? If they don't have that belief that it does make sense, there's no way they're going to be able to reverse engineer it, right? Yeah, so this is the same point. We want to insist it makes sense. Well, you knew the thing was flying, so it makes sense. Right? There you go. So you know this now. Now, I'm not not... I'm pushing any alien theories here just in case anybody I'm just using it as an example <laughs> yeah, today you have to be so careful with conspiracy theories and all sorts of stuff no it's just an example of something that's outside of our awareness and knowledge but doesn't mean we can't figure it out you can through the process of reverse engineering but the key point to reverse engineering is to be receptive which means we assume it makes sense otherwise forget about it right now, since the spaceship crashed, you might have to say, well, maybe it didn't work <laughs> because it crashed, <laughs> just in case, right? All right, so uh, that way we're able to come to comprehend that which is outside of our current knowledge and imagination. And I touched on this last week. Uh, no, it was in a different lecture, actually, sorry. But this is a key point, yes? Learning by definition is that which is outside of our current knowledge and imagination. Let me repeat that. This is a crucial point. This first paragraph, I cannot emphasize how huge it is, right? Uh, what we need to learn is outside of our current knowledge and imagination. If it's something within our current knowledge and imagination, what we're really doing is not actually true capital L learning. It's just extending what we know. It's extrapolating what we know. It's refining, honing, and so on, practicing what we know. It's not something new. If you in your life are basically going along and you say, you know what, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. You know, I've got a good job. I've got a good life. You know, my kids are grown up, whatever. You're saying everything is fine and hunky dory yet uh, I'm not really satisfied. Right. I get this all the time. Not really satisfied. I want more. Yeah. Uh, capital M more. You might not say capital M more, but when I mention it, it's like, yes, that's what I want. I want capital M more. I want moreness in my life. But I don't know what it is. By definition, thus, what you need to learn is outside of your knowledge and imagination. Yes? 
Very important point. Very, very important point. So this honesty to say, ha, I need to look outside of what I do. Therefore, when it's outside of what I know, it's going to be unintelligible at first. It's going to be new, strange, weird, and I can't be put off by that. That is what I'm looking for, that which does not initially make sense to me. Because everything that does make sense has resulted in my life being, well, blah. And we don't want to have blah, right? <laughs> so this is a core point. This is why people get stuck and they loop and they loop and they loop looking at the stuff that they think they should and know, but it's all known stuff. So it doesn't really help you very much. You've got to be open, got to be open. Most, most, most critical. I, I, I just, you know, this is so huge, this. And I want to emphasize this. I'm going to be sharing many things, which, yeah, it's just a paragraph, just, a, you know, two sentences there. But they are profoundly life-changing, everything-changing sentences. This concept of receptivity, this understanding of our learning what we need to learn, being outside of our current knowledge and imagination, huge deal. Reverse engineering, huge deal. Changes everything. These are profoundly changing conceptions. Now, we have this expectation of profound coming with bells and whistles and fireworks and lightning and thunder and all sorts of magical stuff. No, sometimes the profound just comes in two sentences in a paragraph. Yes, very important to be aware of. Part of our receptivity, the, the profound, and when the profound is shared in a really cool way, then we, when we've done it, we say, mm, okay, so you're saying this is like massively profound. But you know, when I read this again, I'm like, well, duh. Yeah, Marcel, I'm hoping it's a duh to you, yes? It's, I believe it's what Einstein meant when he said you can't get to the same result by, or you can't come to a different result by continuing to do the same thing over and over again. Exactly, exactly. Madness, madness, madness. Now, I have news for Mr. Einstein, by the way. He, he didn't have computers in his day, really. But I do many things on my computer exactly the same way and get a different result. But anyway, I'm just having fun. But what I'm trying to say is that, that hopefully you'll see this as a duh. Because when we see the profound as a duh, that means we've gotten something real. Yes, because to me, sensibility, sobriety, awesomeness, when you really connect to the duh, you're connecting to the obviousness of it. Yes, it's obvious. It's duh. That's magical. It wasn't obvious and it wasn't a duh just before it became obvious. But once it's obvious, you want it to be a duh because then, well, it's, it's, it's obvious. It's easy to assimilate easy to integrate, easy to understand. So I make every effort to have the profound be a duh, right? Very powerful thing, very powerful thing. Let's continue. Once we've applied the fullness of every process of comprehension and understanding at our disposal, including checking with appropriate sources, and we still cannot see the sense, then we might come to the conclusion something doesn't add up, but only then. Almost always, though, in well-considered content, there's always sensibility. Our task is to find it. All the layers, as inevitably, there's, of course, more. Right. Very, very, very powerful. Very simple technique. Very powerful. Now, I'm bringing in a core aspect of impeccability here in this middle paragraph to say, hey, we're going to check it thoroughly. We're going to think it through to the end. We're going to perspective shift to multiple perspectives. I'm going to come to those techniques and tools later on. But I'm going to give it my absolute best. And maybe like the spaceship, you know, I'm going to check it out thoroughly. Maybe this was a, a flawed spaceship. That's why it crashed. Right? I have to keep that in mind. So there's always that possibility. But typically, like I said, with well-considered content, the thing is going to work. Or typically with a spaceship, well, it got here, so that to have worked at least most of the time. So I'm going to also assume that it generally works and maybe there was some little minor glitch in it. Right? But I'm just maintaining my perspective. It keeps me open for learning. Yes, very, very important. This is what self-honesty and honesty is all about, why it's mentioned as a task of doing as it keeps us open. All right, now let's come to something that's uh, somewhat particular to me and how I do things and my programs, uh, and this is repeat backs. Now, before I start yet, maybe mentioned 
there's a very sophisticated understanding behind this of how the brain works, how the brain learns, how language works, all sorts of stuff. So it's very simple in its application, but there's multiple layers of value that come into this. Very cool. So repeat backs are exactly that. You repeat back the course or program content on a slide by slide basis. Right now, as you're going through your own stuff, you might want to do this on a point by point sentence uh, uh, by sentence, paragraph by paragraph, doesn't matter. However, you are grasping it. Uh, the key is to repeat back to yourself, right? Now, you want to do this on the slide by slide basis. At least this is what I ask my participants to do as appropriate. You know, sometimes they might not be, but we'll see. In your own words, though, not verbatim. This is very important, right? So everybody knows the husband that, uh, you know, he's sitting there and the wife is giving him an earful and, and she says, oh, you're not listening. He says, no, I am. And he repeats what she said. Verbatim, right? He throws her words right back at her. See, I'm listening. No, he wasn't. He's just able to repeat verbatim. Yes, I have the skill too. It's very easy to do. Yeah. But am I really paying attention to what he's saying? No, I've tuned you out. I'm just allowed my memory to regurgitate. No, so that's not what what a repeat back is. It's not to say it verbatim, right? Repeat backs are to say it in your own words. This is very, very critical. Now, I, I would challenge anybody here, right? Just try this. Say you've got something important to share to somebody. yeah, And you say, hey, Marcel, what did I just say? Uh, but in your own words, see what happens. I can give it a go. What happens? Yep. Oh, I wasn't actually asking you. You're welcome to do a repeat back if you want to. I was just using it as an example. Oh, uh, please go ahead if you like. Uh, no, but, oh, it's important ahead. to retranslate within our own spectrum exactly. of actual verbal understanding so that we can conceptualize using our own words. Exactly. Now, now, look how brilliant that was, right? Look how brilliant that was. In other words, when I heard Marcel now, I can say, man, Marcel really, uh, he was paying attention to what I'm saying because he didn't just repeat my words. He put it in his own words, which demonstrated to me and anybody listening that Marcel actually comprehends and understands and gets what I'm saying. Yes. Right. Now you put it in your own words. You also demonstrating that to yourself. So. I love the repeat backs because for me, I get to make sure that the participant actually does understand what I'm trying to communicate. Yeah. Now, I, if they just repeat my words back to me, how do I know? I have no idea of knowing. How do they know that they actually understand? They don't either if they just repeat the words back. But in a repeat back like this, you can feel assured when you get the confirmation from me that, yes, you understood what I was trying to say. Now, does that mean you have to agree with it? No, not at all. It just means you understood. Yes? That's a massive skill. I don't have to just, when I understand you, doesn't mean I have to agree. No. For me personally, I throw agree and disagree out of my vocabulary. I don't use them. I don't care to agree or disagree with you. I care to understand you much, much more potent. You see this on the posts on the internet in group everywhere. Everybody's, oh, I agree with you. Like they're doing me a great favor. Uh, no, I want you to understand. You may be agreeing to what you think I'm saying, not to what I'm actually saying. When I know you understand and you can give me a repeat back, then I'm satisfied. Whether you agree or not, disagree, totally irrelevant to me. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter, right? My ego is not invested in stuff like this. So the repeat backs are about comprehension and understanding and demonstrating it. Furthermore, you took that information and you made it your own. You own this now, right? I, I mean, this may be not something new to you, but let's assume it was new. If you can say it in your own words, it's yours. How cool is that? See what I mean? Now you've added to yourself. You, you've built yourself. You've grown. It's like you put more bricks on building your house. This is up. Very, very, very powerful things, right? So there's a couple of other things. I, I, maybe I'll mention them. So I'll just re read a bit. And if not, I'll come back to it. Repeat backs enable you to check, test, and verify that you are understanding and comprehending accurately, not necessarily agreeing, just understanding. As an internal mechanism, this is critical for learning and true retention. When we understand, we know and when we know, there's no need to remember. The difference between no and no is vast. So capital K knowing and just regular knowing, huge difference. Regular knowing stuff is in your memory. It's just sitting on your hard drive. 
capital. K knowing is when you've integrated it into your operating system. Big, big, big difference, yes? I mean, just think of your computer. When you've got to go and pull it off your hard drive, I don't care how fast your SSD hard drive is, doesn't matter. It's still slower than it being integrated into the operating system, right? So when you know it in your operating system, doesn't matter, your hard drive crashes, your data gets wiped out, so what? Doesn't matter, my hard drive works. Right? I mean, my operating system, it can continue. So this is capital K knowing. When you make it your own, it becomes part of your operating system. When it's just not your own, and it's just memory, it's just information, it goes to your hard drive. Yeah, so not all that useful. Um, other benefits. This is what I was thinking to say earlier. Here it comes. So other benefits. Hearing yourself, perspective on yourself, your understanding and your awareness, expression, practice and emphasis. Certainly, certainty of actually knowing what you take into yourself is what you think it is. It's a big deal. And why is this a big deal? How often do you actually get to hear yourself? Very seldom. Because normally when we're talking, we're paying attention to what we're saying and you know, we're thinking about what it is. We, we're looking at how the person's responding and listening to us and paying attention. We're not necessarily listening to what we are saying, but when you do a repeat back, you actually get to hear yourself. Wow, oh, you know, I never really thought about this. Oh, that's really interesting. Now that I put it into my own words, ah, yeah, you know what? This is something that matters to me, that is important to me. Oh, I never kind of thought of it. You get to hear yourself. You get perspective on yourself. You get to look at yourself from the outside in a way. And this is a massive, massive, massive benefit. Plus, of course, anytime you are expressing yourself, you are also practicing expression. Now, part of way of impeccability, we start off module one, session one is clarity of intent. What is it that you want to get out of this? What are you looking to achieve, accomplish? Many things come up in that. Almost always for everybody, they say, I want to learn to express myself better. In way of impeccability, we don't ever focus on that. It happens automatically because of things like repeat backs and the next part that we're coming to now takeaways so this is a side benefit you're getting to practice expressing yourself huge 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 the more you express yourself the more you practice the better you get at it the more your your thoughts get organized the more you know what's going on inside you the more connected you are to it etc 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 yeah so a lot of benefits that come from this what we think we say what we mean we say and what we actually say can all be different. Likewise with what we hear. We believe we're speaking the same language when actually we aren't. Yeah, we think so. We are, we're all speaking English. No, yeah, maybe, but we're still not speaking the same language. Yeah, just take a few complicated conceptions, you know, something like awareness. And you ask your friends, what does awareness mean to you? Huh? you <laughs> you're gonna get a whole bunch of wonderful different answers, right? So you think when you say awareness that they understand what you mean. That is only a belief on your part. You've never tested it. You've never checked to see if they understand the word awareness to mean the same as you do, correct? You don't know. It could, it could mean something, but typically it actually doesn't. So when we do a repeat back, we're making sure that we're speaking the same language. Very, very, very powerful benefit. I don't know why my graphic didn't load here, by the way. No idea. It's this one here, yeah, just flipped upside down, but oh well. All right, we come to the next part, takeaways. And I love this. Yes, uh, some people do some version of takeaways, and uh, but uh, this is a very big deal to me. And we really get into it. It's a very sophisticated thing. I have a whole session on the philosophy of takeaway. It's a very big deal. So I'm just going to touch on it here as something that is required to do. Now, let me go back to repeat backs real quickly. I want to just emphasize this point again. Ah, there's my graphic. Uh, emphasize when you're going through material, you're watching this video and you say, mm, wait a second, uh, what was he saying there? Repeat it back to yourself, but in your own words. Whatever you, you, you read or you heard me say or somebody else or something you're reading in a book or watching on YouTube or wherever, 
repeat it back to yourself in your own words. This is something that's going to be required to do. Like in, in at least when you do wave impeccability, you're going to come on Zoom after you've gone through the online uh, session, the online course content material. And this is what I'm going to ask you. Okay, repeat back to me what you on the slide. And, you know, and you'll say, okay, here we go. This is my repeat back on this. And then I can say, okay, there you go. Wow, cool. Wow. You know what? I never thought of that. Wow, man. Oh, Marcel, you're just adding to it. I learned too. Right. So in the repeat backs, not just for you, it's for everybody, but you get to check and understand. So it's part of this actual doing of the course is to do a repeat back. It's a very simple exercise, very simple thing to do, but there's a lot more to it than we believe. Right. There's a lot of underlying stuff that happens. You're training your brain and all sorts of stuff. Very, very put emphasis, 101 different things that come into it. But it's that's complicated. You know, I'll spend the whole rest of the live talking just about that. Takeaways, likewise, are something you do. Yes. So when you finished with something, uh, for me, I like to do takeaways while I'm going through something. I always apply this to everything. I do takeaways on absolutely everything in life. And I'll explain in a minute now. As we go through this, you'll see huge 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 simple thing but huge takeaways are exactly that what you take away with you that which you are going to use and is valuable to you and that which you will add to your life and your being everything that leads to or is important and necessary for change so this is you extracting from whatever what is useful and valuable to you what i want to take away from me i've gone to this lecture i've gone to the seminar i've read this book but if i walk out the door and i don't have stuff that's in my bag that i'm taking away with me in my psychology in my understanding bag in my philosophical bag in my emotional bag whatever bag spiritual bag doesn't matter I want to take something away with me. I want to be changed. I want to be added to. Yes, this is what a takeaway is. It what is is meaningful and purposeful and significant to you. MPS again, right? Yeah. Very, very, very important. If you don't do that, you might sit there and go, all right, so let me ask you this. Uh, I, I, I've mentioned this example uh, probably by now, well, not quite a trillion, but at least a billion times. Uh, how many wonderful memes have you seen online, Marcel? Like true wisdom memes, and you said, man, that's really cool. That's awesome stuff. Well, considering up until recently, I pronounced it meme, not a lot. Yeah, probably a trillion at least, like me, right? I've yeah, seen no. a trillion of them. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, and every time I said, man, that's really awesome. Now, I know I have friends who, who absolutely live in meme world, right? That's it. I mean, they, they, they have meme speak, they have pages and groups and everything, and they post dozens and dozens of memes. However, since I've known them over the course of, I don't know, the last half dozen years or so of being on Facebook, I've not seen any change in them whatsoever. None. They're the same person, right? And if you ask them, they'll probably say the same thing. Why have they not changed, even though they're seeing all these profound memes? Because the meme is there. They're not making it their own. They don't take things away from that meme. And what you take away are the things that you need to apply and act on and do and practice and implement and integrate and make your own and make innate and self-prove to yourself that you have. Otherwise, it's just a meme. So we can believe that we see this and we think, wow, that's so wise, that's so wonderful, that's so awesome. Oh, I must be a better person now, I must be changed. No. Recognition of wisdom does not necessarily mean change. Let me repeat that. Recognition of wisdom does not necessarily mean change. It takes application. You have to take something away from it. You have to make it your own. There's things you need to do. You have to apply whatever you're seeing. You have to put it inside you, do it, uh, make it your own, etc. Otherwise, nothing. And it starts with doing a takeaway. Yes, what did I get from that? What makes a difference to me? What am I going to use, in other words, right? So it's not just what's valuable to me. Yes, the information is valuable, but I've got to use it, combination of the two. Right? Without the use, there's no application. Without the application, it's all meaningless, as we see from the memes. Right? I mean, if it was up to the memes, the whole world would have changed by now because there's tons of these wonderful, magical wisdom memes out there. So just seeing it, not enough. Yeah? We can understand, but that doesn't necessarily mean we agree or disagree. Or what we understand is pertinent and relevant to us. 
It's a very key point here. So again, with the memes, right? We have to make it pertinent and relevant to us. We have to actually do something to change. Our takeaways are what's important to us personally and what we are going to incorporate into us and implement as part of our lives and what we'll use as part of our new self. Takeaways are thus what we are going to apply in our lives. Yeah, I, I kind of get ahead of myself here. You know, the topic automatically leads to things. So I'm basically saying what already here, yeah, but that's all good. It's all good. So the takeaways, very, 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 very big deal. Uh, before I go on to slide two here, Bina, anything, any comments? Please jump in, Bina. You always have so much awesome that you share. Oh, yes, uh, I, when you were when you were uh, sharing about repeat backs and takeaways, and I was thinking that every single time when a participant uh, share, including me, of course, when we share our takeaways, this is the kind of a recognition certificate and acknowledgement certificate you receive that, yes, whatever promises you were making or you were saying before doing this course, we agree with that, that yes, we have already achieved that yeah, yeah, every single yeah. time. Yeah. So it's not like, okay, yeah. you are going to, we are going to uh, say it or acknowledge this at the end of the course. Right. Every single day with every slide, we receive this acknowledgement and this certificate of yeah, agreement that yes, yes, we have achieved and we have seen that promises being fulfilled. So yes. this is so yes. profound, so profound. Yes, yes. So it's a it's a profound yeah. feedback wow. mechanism also on yourself. And also the takeaway gives you an idea of what is important to you. So it's a mechanism of abstracting stuff, extracting stuff. You don't need to learn stuff that you already know. But the takeaway says, oh, this is new. This is useful. This is valuable. Or maybe I did know this, but you know what? I haven't been using it. I've been applying it. Okay, I need to use it. So yes, what Bina says, it's a confirmation feedback loop process. Very, very powerful. Very powerful. And again, Marcel, you jump in, mate. You ask, please go ahead. Anytime, anytime. I was just, so this is beautiful. So it's oh, my pleasure. The previous slide is, it's a recipe for confidence. Exactly. Through exactly. introspective guided self-awareness. Exactly. Self exactly. Yeah? Exactly. Very exactly. Beautiful. exactly. Profound, profound. What Marcel said is so simple. He said, yeah, well, duh, Marcel. Yeah, well, duhs can be ridiculously profound. And that's when they are. We've got to learn to really see the profound in the duh. Yes. Or the sublime in the mundane. Same thing. Very, very important. Yeah, it's a massive, massive deal. Massive deal. Very simple, but massive. Very huge, very huge. Sometimes takeaways can come indirectly via inspiration or imagination, for instance, and not always from the obvious we are focused on. It's important to remain open to all that comes to us or comes up in us and to seek out and extract the takeaways from everything. We want to develop the habit of always doing a takeaway with everything. Now, in the in Way of Impeccable itself, there's a whole session on the philosophy of takeaways, and we get into all the different kinds of takeaways, how they happen. But takeaways aren't only necessarily from the slide. Like I might be sitting here and I'm listening and going on, and something just pops in my head and it just kind of bubbles up. It's like, man, where did that come from? I add that into your takeaway. Because when you start to get into it, there's usually a relevance and a pertinence to what came to you from outside. It's part of your takeaway. Yeah, I, I, I had this weird thought that doesn't seem to have anything to do with what the lecture was about or the slide was about or the book was about. But mm, now that I think of it, oh, yes, oh, now I remember, oh, that was the incident with Benny and, you know, this happened and that happened and, oh, ah, see now, oh, wow, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we learn a lot from those. I call them come up takeaways because it's stuff that just comes up in you. Who knows from where? It doesn't matter. So part of this is very important. And when we do takeaways on everything, we are learning to take that information and translate it into our personal programming. And it doesn't just go to the hard drive, but it gets to update the operating system. Yeah. Huge, 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 huge. All right, so we got a quote here. This mechanism, the takeaway repeat back mechanism, the repeating and restating from different angles and in different ways, this is for me all part of the mastery process. It's how I mistress something. Don't want to be sexist. How I become fully conversant with it. 
how I explore all its facets, all its nuances, how I am able to know it so well I can shape it, shift it, adapt it, and use it in all manner possible, in any manner possible, depending on appropriateness. But this only comes when we have gained a full familiarity of the matter, when we're able to know it from all angles, when we can express it and thus see it from all angles, when we can come at it from any angle, when we can use it from all the angles. That's when we have attained mastery over it or mistressness. It's not really a, a, a equivalent. So, yeah. Yeah, we can mistress and we can master things. And I don't know, maybe there's other words, but uh, I like to use them both. It's very important here, right? So this is part of this owning it in such a way that you get to use it from all the angles. If you want to see expertise from somebody, right? Uh, just take a simple thing like a screwdriver. Yeah, and say, okay, I don't use a screwdriver every day, only occasionally. I know how to use it. I'm competent with a screwdriver. But man, when I go to a carpenter and somebody who uses this every single day, oh my goodness, the things they can do with a screwdriver, fantastic, right? So we want to have this with these key points of understanding, key points of knowledge in our lives to really have that deep expertise on them, right? Because then you can use it in any situation. You can use it in ways not intended necessarily, and this is very powerful, right? Very, very powerful. All right. Oh, there's more to this. Oh, this is from Biela. Oh, wonderful. I love Biela quotes. For me, I don't like to move on to the next point until I have attained mastery of the current point. That way, I know I don't have to rely on memory. Once I have mistressed it, it's mine. It's become a part of me. And of course, then I have changed. And that's the key. To get to that point where we change our being, that way we are, not just our memory. And for me, that lies through mastering a new point of understanding to the point that I can use it, use it without having to remember it. This is all part of my takeaway process. There can really never be enough of it. For even when we have mistressed it, we, can, we still need to constantly practice it, apply it. And that, of course, is a constant joy. I am framing the context of perception for learning in general and to provide a way to come at it regardless of how one is, to provide the ability to realize there's no need for comparison. It's choice. The choice of our individual, where the choice of the individual where they choose to be. The new nobility respect and honor these choices and hope that theirs would be respected and honored in turn. They fully understand we each walk our own path, whatever it is. Biela Noble. All right. So Biela is part of a long book series about the new nobility and it's um, um, you know, um, uh, a, a utopian story in its own way, but it's 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 the idea of it is to to implement our learning and philosophy to show it being applied in a very real way. So it's just a bonus thing that I draw from, and as we go through, it's just part of what I bring to the table a little bit. Um, but um, Biela in this is sharing stuff that says, hey, what, you know what, here's mornas here. There's stuff that you can really do and understand the bigger picture. So takeaways is all a part of this, right? Making stuff your own, becoming expert at it, learning to be the master or the mistress of what you encounter, what you learn. Very powerful. Which brings us to power. And your dictionary of power. Oh, my goodness. Now, something to, completely unique to me. Again, you know, but doesn't mean you can't use it. Doesn't whether you're doing Wave Impeccability or any other Mornus project programs and courses. Doesn't matter. You can do this on your own. Now, again, dictionary of power is its own session, complete full session in Wave Impeccability. We really get into it, but I'll give the basics of it. Because this is something that anybody can do and utilize. Right? Even if you don't get the fullness of it, doesn't matter. So let me go through this, what this is. Uh, Bina, let me ask you, uh, did you did you connect with Donna? Did you come? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, she is busy because Paige is coming to her. Uh, I have a oh, question. Okay. okay. Um, Listening, Bina. Listening. Sure, yes. Uh, sure and CJ both are watching and uh, CJ asked a question and he says that, uh, what do you mean by takeaways indirectly coming to said person? 
Ah, so in this case, it's like I'm sitting and I'm, I'm, I'm watching TV, right? And I'm watching the news. But suddenly, I remember a conversation that I had with, with somebody. Well, maybe the somebody's called CJ. It has nothing to do with the news, right? But, um, or at least the program. And that takeaway that's indirectly coming, it's not coming from the content itself. It comes from who knows where. It might come from imagination, from inspiration, from intuition, um, randomness, who knows? But the fact that it is bubbling up in you, it's typically very significant. So takeaways that come from outside ourselves that come indirectly are very cool all right so also i might be uh, watching and like in this case dictionary of power dictionaries right indirectly i think of dictionaries i think of well you know back in school they they kind of i got hidings because i didn't know stuff that was in the dictionary oh that's very negative i don't want anything to do see indirect you may have a negative association with dictionaries now because you had a bad experience back in your childhood somewhere indirect connectivities but in your takeaways make a note of those because they need to be dealt with whether they're negative or positive or whatever or just something new coming to the table doesn't have to come directly from what you are paying attention to so in this case you know like if you're doing the the, the program you're going to be going through you know slides like this but it's the way of impeccability slides you'll be going back and forward and you'll be taking notes you'll be reading okay what's my takeaway here okay first of all let me do the repeat back but now what am i taking away from this because the repeat back is just me demonstrating i understand what's there but the takeaway is me saying what's valuable but as I go through, I say, mm, okay, this and this and this is valuable. I write it all down. This is pertinent to me. This really connects. This I want to hold on to. This I want to save inside me and act on and apply. Uh, and then some random thought, something that doesn't belong comes to you. That's what I mean by indirect. The brain doesn't always show us all the connecting links between what suddenly comes into awareness and the thing that we're paying attention to. That's why you write it down. Later on Zoom, typically that's what we do with those come up takeaways, those indirect takeaways. We, we explore all of those links. How did this link, how come it's connected? And then you're like, oh my goodness, I didn't know. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. And then you see it all. Very potent stuff. So great question, CJ. Great question. So indirect means just simply not from what you are paying attention to. The takeaway is coming from elsewhere. You might not even think it's a takeaway. It's not a usual takeaway. It's just something that's in your mind and awareness. So it's not the same as a, as you deliberately making a takeaway. It's just a thought, an idea, maybe a connection, whatever. But we're going to treat it as if it's a takeaway. Yeah, Bina. Thank you, thank you so much, thank you so much, sir, for this profound answer. And he says that uh, yes, I just had a major aha moment. So share is typing for him. But this is this is so brilliant. Thank you. Ah, so 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 was the aha moment on on your question or something else? No, because CJ asked this question, and when I put it here, and then we, you were elaborating it, then he says, oh, yes, now it makes sense. Ah, okay, so, yes. good. Okay, okay, good. That's why we like questions, right? Because, you know, yes. we can say the same thing, and and then somebody comes, they say it slightly differently, and suddenly we click. It's like, ah, okay, I get it. So this is part of why takeaways and repeatbacks are so potent. Because when you hear things, sometimes it's not in your brain's language. It's just written in a slightly different code and whatever. But when you hear it in a different way, your brain goes, ah, 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 I get it. And it all falls into place, right? Now, we are going to take this next point here, this next doing that is this, what I'm sharing here is a doing, right? Same with takeaways is a doing, repeat backs is a doing, yeah. being honest and self-honest, doing. It's a doing, yeah. not something to remember, it's a doing, right? So these yes. are your tasks of doing. And very part, the dictionary of power is absolutely this. Now, uh, I'll, I'll read through it and then I'll explain a little bit more what I was going to say when we think of it from a computer programming point of view, it's very potent. Your dictionary of power is a list of all the power conceptions which matter, are important, make a difference, and are useful and valuable to you, as well as their extended understandings. So what is a power conception? Takeaway is a power conception. Repeat back is a takeaway conception. Appropriateness is a power conception. Impeccability is a, pro, a, a power conception. Trusting without trusting, believing without believing. I don't know. I've got a whole, there's tons of them, right? It's something that really makes a difference and something which is influential in your life. It has power, in other words, like impeccability, patience, fantastic power conception, right? And also something which has more meaning to it than what we usually describe. 
right? So there's like regular patience, which you know for most people really means kind of impatience, really, right? But capital P patience, this is a skill, this is a power, this is a big deal. Now I'm not going to go into that because again, you know, it'll take a long time. But this is the stuff that we are paying attention to, stuff that really, really matters. Yeah, and and as as I go on, I'll explain why this makes such a difference. The entries can be single conceptions, compound conceptions, even short phrases or quotes. Be sure to, like for instance, uh, look for or train yourself to find the sublime in the mundane. Right? You can put that sublime in the mundane. You don't have to put the rest in there. Just that sublime in the mundane. You can figure it out from the rest, right? It's like a fractal conception. The moment you're paying attention to it, it starts building on itself and then it starts to develop and you get this moreness that's come out of it. This is really profound. Just that simple, simple little sublime in the mundane. Really, you can, we, we tend to think the sublime is something magical and big and wonderful and comes with bells and whistles and fireworks and all this stuff. Sometimes it does, yes, but other times, if you really pay attention, you truly can see the sublime in the mundane. Yeah, I mean, snowflake, oh, people give poor snowflakes a hard time. But, you know, when you really look at a snowflake really closely and up close, these are incredible. They're all different, each and every single one. It's unbelievable, right? Beautiful patterns, everything like this, sublime in the mundane. Yes. All right. Very wonderful. The entries can be, oh, I read this already. All right, single conceptions, compound, even short phrases or quotes. Be sure to understand it's your dictionary of power. Marcel, yours, 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 not mine, not way of impeccabilities, not uh, Joe, whoever's giving you your course. No, yours, yours, doesn't matter. I don't care who says what. You need to make it your own and you putting this in. It's my conception. I put impeccability into it. Doesn't matter where the soul has been using this course and the thing is called wave impeccability. When you put impeccability in your dictionary of power, you've got to make sure that you understand what it means, that not only do you understand what it means, but this is something that you fully connect to. That's you, that's yours, that you ascribe to, that you uh, completely are in, 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 uh, in, um, in harmony with, right? It's you, you own it. Something that you truly, truly say, this is me. This is sensible to me. Yes, very important, right? This matters to me. This is important to me, right? This is why it's your dictionary of power. And that's what makes it a dictionary of power. One of the reasons, right? The entries in your dictionary of power are the foundation of your new self-conception and are therefore extremely pertinent and relevant to you as it's what you emphasize as you, and thus what creates, sustains, and constantly expands into your ever ongoing mourners. So you're building yourself. Right, now look at just a few conceptions that are mentioned already. Impeccability, uh, capital T, trust, well, there's a new one, but uh, patience, uh, understanding, uh, trusting without trusting, um, takeaways, repeat backs honesty, self-honesty, all go into your dictionary of power. Why? Because these are things which, which Marcel is saying, yes, check this honesty, very important to me. Self-honesty also, right? They're not always the same. Patience, hell yes, oh, this is something I might need to work on. Oh no, I've got lots of patience. I maybe have ridiculous patience. Okay, check. All right, all of these things, you go check, check, check. What are you doing? Are you not creating an understanding, a new self-conception, not definition will come into self-conception. It's a big deal. It's part of the program. I don't know if I mentioned it here, but anyway, uh, your self-conception, a conception is open-ended, definition is limited. You building, you building a new operating system and all of these entries into your dictionary of power are those top level programming uh, uh, terms or conceptions, right? Now, if you know anything about computer programming, if you look at the old programs, the very like early ones like BASIC, they're very wordy and all of this. And then you get the next one that followed after that. I'm, I'm going back a whole bunch of years now, right? BASIC then came Pascal and all sorts of things, right? Fortran and all this. But each of them took the previous ones and they, the, the new uh, programming uh, language, right? The actual language, the words, the concepts that you used were condensations of information. And then you got greater and greater and greater co uh, uh, condensations, right? So in the high level languages, they use a conception, a term, 
but it means tons of things underneath it, right? This is what we are doing. We are packing all that information into these conceptions. That's why they power conceptions because they're like the capstone of a pyramid and there's all this understanding and moreness in the pyramid, yes? So if I ask you and I say Marcel, right? And I say to Baina, I say the word Marcel. Marcel means something very different to Marcel than it means to Bina, correct? Yes. Yeah, Marcel. I mean, for you, Marcel is that's me. That's that's who I am. This is my identity. And your whole history is in there, your understanding, your thoughts, your beliefs, your 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 likes, your your desires, all of the stuff, right? So Marcel is a power conception. See what I mean? It's a big deal. So we're going to do this with other conceptions. And now, instead of having Marcel be a closed definition, well, you know what? Marcel struggles to learn. Marcel, uh, you know, uh, has got stuff in his past that he's not happy about. Okay, Marcel is intelligent, uh, but whatever. All of these things, you can define yourself, but they can be very limiting. So when you start to build your dictionary of power and you add conceptions in it, which are open-ended and connected, you now say, you know what, Marcel isn't just the sum total of my past. No, 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 no. Marcel is a process. Marcel is evolving. Marcel is ever-changing. Marcel is open. Marcel is continually adding stuff. So the Marcel you knew yesterday, well, that was yesterday's Marcel. Today's Marcel, different to yesterday's Marcel. Are there similarities? Yes. But Marcel is ever growing, evolving, changing, learning, shifting. This is magical, right? So this is part of a difference between a conception and a definition. Yes. Definitions kind of look backwards. Conceptions are open-ended, looking forward, connected. They're not limited. Very, very powerful point. So this dictionary of power, you adding stuff that you can use. And there's a moreness to it. That's why it's called dictionary of power. Yes, we no, are. So Oh, ask a God. question quickly. Please, 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 please. I love them. Don't worry about interrupting. It's not a problem. Is what you're describing similar to zipping large volumes of exactly. categorical information? Exactly. Yes. Ah, now I love this. We're not making a zip file. We're making a cabinet file. Yeah. Very different, right? A zip file, you've got to go and unzip it. and un un What's the thing with a cabinet file for those of you who don't know? When you start a new operating system, the, the the things typically come in a cabinet file or some other variation of it. The difference between a cabinet file and a zip file and a regular file is that a cabinet file is a self-opening file. The instructions for opening it are contained within the file. This is what we want in our dictionary of power and the conceptions that go in there. When you think, like I said, the sublime in the mundane, I don't have to put the whole explanation there. If I just pay attention to a little bit, it starts to explain itself. Right? It's self-explanatory, and this is what we want. Our dictionary of power, we want them to be populated with self-evident sensibilities. Let me repeat that. Self-evident sensibilities. So that's an entry into your dictionary of power. This is a huge deal, a self-evident sensibility. Well, patience. Is patience not a self-evident sensibility? It's like, well, is patience a good thing? Well, duh. Now explain to me how patience is a bad thing. I can, but still on the whole, to have it as a quality, this is a power. Because, yes, it's all about appropriateness. Sometimes you need to be impatient. Well, when I need to get out of a burning building, I don't want to be patient and hang around till I get burnt. No, thank you very much. i got to be impatient and get the hell out of there, right? So I, I use this as an example because literally, literally, people get burnt inside a burning building. When they have opportunity to run out because they can't make a decision. Too many choices, they end up running around in a circle and then they end up burning. They can't choose which one's the best option. Who cares? Any option is a good option. <laughs> yeah. So we have to be very understand this, right? Very powerful stuff. So when we come to this, uh, like you were saying here, uh, in terms of the conception, self-evident sensibilities, we don't need to prove it. Uh, you know, it's self-evident. I don't have to believe anybody. It's self-evident. Now I have something that really makes a difference. That's why it's a dictionary of power, not a dictionary of beliefs. Because beliefs are beliefs. By definition, they are not facts. Yes? A self-evident sensibility like patience doesn't take belief into, into account. The very understanding of what patience is, say, yeah, okay, this is useful. This is a tool, right? Any tool, any tool, it doesn't ask you to believe in it. This is a screwdriver. 
I don't have to believe in it or not. It works. It does what it's meant to do. And if I want to unscrew screws, well, there you go. Or whatever else I want to do with it. Actually, I use mine. I eat a lot of oranges, and it's really nice for breaking open the tip to start. I don't know. I struggle with it sometimes. So I use that for that. Just saying. You can use it for all sorts of different things, right? My point is when you understand the conception, it has usefulness. It's self-evident in what it does. I don't have to have belief. This is a much, 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 much more potent and sophisticated way of living. Because if our core is based on self-evident sensibilities and not belief, when I get to beliefs, I can use those to deal with the beliefs and treat the beliefs as something that might change. This is very useful because, of course, we all know we had beliefs. We believed something was completely, absolutely so, and we found out later it wasn't. Yeah? Very, very powerful. So once this has happened once to you, you can't ever trust your beliefs to be facts after that, yes? Very powerful, very powerful, very, very powerful. Uh, this dictionary of power, oh, that's what I was, was, was busy saying. It's a dictionary, which means it's connected to vocabulary and language. Right? I didn't call it a list of power or something like that. No, it's a dictionary of power because we are going to treat it very much like a dictionary you're going to make your entry and next to it you're going to say patience means this and this and this and this to me and if you ever really pay attention to actual dictionaries every year they come up with the latest uh, revision and they might extend the explanation they might say wow you know what patience used to mean well take the word gay they changed that word when i was a kid gay meant happy cheerful light right now it's, it's, it means homosexuality very few people remember the original meaning so words change likewise our conceptions change right and it's a very powerful thing to keep updating them also right uh, with something like impeccability or or patience these are sophisticated conceptions and you might say whoa you know what uh, patience yes i understand it the ability to wait without stress the ability to be at peace with what's going on etc but also patience is the absence of arrogance when it comes to timing holy moly i never even thought of me being impatient as being arrogant why is it being arrogant uh, well because i'm expecting the world to operate according to my timetable so now patience is associated with lack of arrogance, right? Wow, man, that's really extended and expanded my understanding of patience. Now it's kind of hard to be impatient because I've got this association with impatience, arrogance. Oh, crap. Well, I can't be impatient anymore, right? It's kind of hard to be impatient when you think of it as arrogance, yeah? You don't want to be arrogant, do you, Marcel? No, yes. no, no. And you're a good person. So you cannot deliberately, consciously be arrogant because it would be a phony according to your own goodness. Yes, can't do it. So now I've just taken impatience off the table. Sorry. <laughs> Some people like being impatient. They don't want to have that taken off the table. They say, dang it, so come on now. I can't, I can't be cursing at the, at the traffic anymore or whatever. Now, anyway. <laughs> So just a little bit of fun, but I'm using this to, to elaborate on the point that uh, our understandings, these conceptions of vocabulary, vocabulary is part of language. Now, this point that I made about not being phony is same thing. When we say things because we are good people and because honesty and self-honesty is integral to us, I'm going into a very sophisticated psychological underpinning understanding of why the dictionary of power is one of power because what you say you're going to try and make true so you have to be very careful with what you say say well you know what i'm somebody who doesn't really learn well the more you say that the more you're going to try and make it true because you don't want to be a liar do you you don't want to be a liar so likewise in the reverse when you start adding uh, 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 words vocabulary conceptions into your speech and part of the dictionary of power is to make this effort when you, we do it in way of impeccability in that specific session we go into using it in our day-to-day -day life when i use the word impeccability patience uh, trusting without trusting believing without believing all the stuff when i start using it in my daily language inside me that honest part that diligent part i call them the inner, inner bureaucrats they're going to make every effort to actually make this something that is me. So I'm adding to my ability to be patient, to be impeccable, because I'm using it as 
as something that's important to me, that's meaningful to me, that's significant to me, something that I want it to be. So the more it's part of my language, the more it becomes me. Our brains are hardwired to do this with language. Language is the way we describe our reality. Yeah. So a dictionary of power, when you have these power conceptions, you are describing a reality that is a mourner's reality. Not a lessness reality, but a mourner's reality. This is what we want. This is how we can shortcut and accelerate actual, real, lasting change. Yeah. Remember I said what we're doing here is very sophisticated. There's a lot behind this. This is why, right? And I'm going fairly quickly on this. But when we really understand the deeper mechanisms of learning and of application and how we are, then we see how all of these tools start to make a difference, a massive, massive difference. Yes. So this is a big, big, big deal, this Dictionary of Power. You're actually building your operating system kind of from scratch again, right? Because, man, you know what? In my the, the operating system I came with, the default operating system, I've got entries into that dictionary of power that are just terrible. Take, for instance, self-doubt, right? Or uh, uh, um, not trusting. Or, for instance, just believing whatever's told. You know, like just you've got to believe like anybody in authority. You've just got to like just accept, well, they, they know that. I was taught when I grew up, and I suspect, Marcel, I don't know how close you are to my age, but when I grew up, the 11th commandment was thou shalt not question was never said out loud, of course, but this was. I was uh, taught to be obedient. Yes, I just got to accept whatever people were telling me. That's the culture I grew up in, right? Which is um, from your accent, I'm assuming, and the, and the name. Um, Same place. Yeah, uh, you know, back in, 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 in the day, South Africa, this was the culture that I grew up in. Very conservative culture. Good people, good meaning people, but nonetheless, right? There's a limitation to that. People in authority are not always right. And sometimes the worst people get to be in authority and now you end up listening to the very worst people. And your obedience starts to become an inappropriate application of goodness. Right there, power conception inappropriate application of goodness. Yes, I don't want to get into that too much because it's a long story, but man, it's a great example of an incredibly powerful power conception to go into a dictionary of power. So we have to be cautious with this. Now, when I'm rebuilding my own my own operating system, my own way of being, and I'm saying what's important to me, not somebody else, because it's your dictionary of power. You're not going to believe anybody. You're going to figure it out for yourself. It's only going to go in there when you've figured it out, when you're confident, when your conscience tell you, I've really worked this out, I've really thought this through, it's now a self-evident sensibility. Then I can put it in there. Very, very, very life-changingly profound on so many levels, right? Changes your entire brain structure by having a new vocabulary. Some incredible system, right? So and it works on your behalf without you needing to struggle and stress and make all sorts of weird efforts and memorize long things and all this. No. It happens innately, automatically. Inadvertent learning, another power conception that I utilize in what I do. And this is a technique to actually take advantage of inadvertent learning. It's an incredibly powerful thing, a big long story behind it, but still, just to mention. The entries in your dictionary of power are the foundation of your new self-conception and therefore extremely pertinent and relevant to you, as it's what you emphasize as you and thus what creates, sustains, and constantly expands you into ever ongoing mourners. Right? I repeat this, this paragraph here because these conceptions are connected. They open, they big picture conceptions. They overview things, right? And because of this, you can keep on growing. They aren't definitions. They don't limit you, right? They expand, they grow, they update all the time. And you're going to update them in your own dictionary of power. Very, very big deal. So um, on this year, I, I'm going to skip this a little bit because this is very particular to if you're doing this and um, diction, you know, in way of impeccability. Uh, just a few things here that I'm, well, actually, maybe I won't skip it then. All right, never mind, it's because it brings in emphasis. So when you're making your own dictionary of power, what I ask the participants to do is the following, right? And, and this is what this is about. But you can apply it on your own too. 
since emphasis is so incredibly powerful for its brain training incredibleness, we always want to keep it in focus. To this end, it's recommended to always capitalize your dictionary of power conceptions. This also serves to differentiate them from their common usage versions, like how we use and mean impeccability and trust, capital I impeccability, capital T trust, is much expanded on the typical understandings of these power conceptions. That capitalization also serves to add an internal emphasis when we speak the terms, uh, like when you hear me say impeccability, you can kind of hear I mean more to it than what you might typically hear it, like you're reading a, a, a Victorian romance novel and they talk about the impeccable gentleman. They're meaning something slightly different to what I mean by impeccable. Right? The inner mind, a genius at implication, uh, will take this to mean these conceptions need to be applied and thus aid you in your application, internalization, and incorporation of these power conceptions, leading to lasting change, real change, and thus why they are power conceptions. So it's a very simple thing to do. You're writing something, you're typing away, and you put in there, you know, patience. Do you mean regular patience or do you mean capital P patience? Trust is a better one. For most people, when they say trust, they say, well, you know, I, I'm just going to trust that things will work out, you know, especially spiritual. I'm just going to trust the universe is going to take it. In other words, they're just engaging in wishful thinking and they just got an excuse to be lazy. That's what that little T trust typically means when I see people use it, right? Well, you know what? Things are going to take care of me. No, you're just being lazy. Sorry. Have you done everything that you can do to make things work out in, in the way you want them to be? No. No, well, I'm just trusting it's going to happen. Well, you're being lazy. So why on earth would the universe or whatever your deity is help you out if you've done made no effort? Uh, 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 you might say, are they really serious? Do they really want this? Because a lot of people want things that they don't really want. They think they want them, but they don't really want them. The only way to know for sure is when you take action, when you do stuff. So now it all changes this whole thing. You, know, you can't just go back to that little T trust. You're not going to get anything. Capital T trust comes to when I say, hey, I've done absolutely everything that I can do. I cannot think of one more thing to do, but still I don't quite have things resolved. Well, uh, now the only thing that's left for me is to capital T, trust. Yeah, Because if I don't capital T, trust, I'm also putting out the intent that, that I'm not going to get what I want. Right? I've done everything I can do, so my capital T trust now becomes an action, a doing. And now it's a sophisticated concept. Again, there's a whole session in Way of Impeccability on capital T trust. Very, very big point. But I'm making the point here about that when we have a term that's capitalized, like when I use capital T trust, I mean a very different thing to when people typically talk about trust. I, I mean a lot more to it. It's a philosophy, actually. Same with, with more. And mourners, mourners, just this term mourners, it's a philosophy. It's a whole way of living and being and thinking. It opens us up. It connects us to stuff. It changes everything. It's a very, very big deal. One simple, simple, simple term mourners. But boy, is it huge. For instance, let's say, okay, I say, hey, Marcel, we're going to go on an adventure. Where are we going? Well, I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, what are we going to do? What are we going to encounter? I, I, I don't know. It's all going to be unknown. We're just going to go out and explore the unknown and connect to the unknown. You say, oh, crap, so you know what? The unknown, that, that doesn't sound very exciting. That's pretty scary. It's like, what the hell do you want to go mess with the unknown? You don't know what the hell you're doing. I say, no, thank you very much. You can have your adventure. I'm staying home. Yeah. Okay, maybe not you, myself, but I'm just using you <laughs> as an example here. But I come to you. I, <laughs> so the next day I come back and I say, you know what, Marcel? I'm going to go on a different adventure. So, all right, I'm, I'm okay, I'm listening, I'm interested. What are we going to be doing this time? Oh, we're going to go be exploring mourners. We're going to go adventure into mourners. We're going to connect to mourners. And this is what we're going to do. Everything we're going to do is good. Oh, sign me up, man. I want mourners. Yes, I love mourners. I want more in my life. Yes, okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. When are we starting? Let's go already now. Mourners, I want more mourners. A uh, very simple shift, right? Unknown to mourners. Same exact thing. One is negative, one is positive. That's how our brain is very stupid when it comes to words and conceptions, why the dictionary of power is so powerful. Because mourners, I'm greedy for mourners. I want mourners. I'm excited about mourners, right? I'm going on an adventure. That's what an adventure is. You're basically just connecting to what the, is the unknown, but you're seeing it as mourners. Shift of perception, shift of perspective. Very profound. So these, these terms oh, okay. make a difference. <clears throat> This is what Tolkien in Lord of the Rings, he said, not all who wander are lost. Exactly. 
Exactly. That that's the you, you took the words right out of my mouth. The very next thing I was going to say is the difference between being lost and being on adventure is the difference between thinking everything is unknown and terrible and negative and seeing everything as mournous, as joy, as exciting. That's the difference. That's the difference, right? When I deliberately embrace uh, the unknown, the lostness as as mourners, it becomes adventure. Exactly. Exactly. So I, to me, life is an adventure. It's not me. It's not a struggle. It's not a, a horrible thing. And I'm always, uh, you know, getting into monster. No, it's an adventure. Oh, yeah, a monster. Yay, a monster. Any gamer who comes across a monster says, yay, right? You play games, I assume. Yes. Online video games. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, not, not much. No, uh, at least you're them. aware of them, right? But I'm just saying. So, you know, this is gamer logic, right? Uh, things that people see as stressful, they see as bonus, right? They, they're looking for the monsters. Yes. Yeah. So, looking for what stands out. Whereas yeah, usually yeah. fear. Mornus, right? It's, for them, it's mornus. It's just a simple shift of terminology. But in our brains, it's what goes with that terminology. It's what's associated with it. Association management, one of the entries into almost uh, all the, well, I could pretty much confidently say, all of the participants of Way of Impeccability have association management in their dictionary of power. This is a profound, profound thing. Our brains are very, very, very simple. And it's like tagging, right? How you tag things makes all the difference. You've got something profound, you tag it as adventure, as borders, as exciting. You don't want to be tagging it as unknown, as potentially dangerous, etc. Uh, you're not going to get people reading your article or watching your video when you tag it that way, right? Uh, this may be bad for you. This is going to cause you unhappiness. This is going to make you misery. You don't want to be adding those tags to what you're doing. No, right? So the same things can have different reactions on us depending on how we perceive it, conceive of it, connect to it. And this is, again, where the dictionary of power comes in. We are learning how to appropriately tag life. Yes, to get more out of it. Very, very, very powerful. Now, our brains can be very, very simple, basically like a computer program, right? So garbage in, garbage out, the old rule of computer programming. Very powerful thing. So your dictionary of power is saying this is high-level, sophisticated programming. It doesn't mean I'm going to be blind to the dangers. No, of course not. But that's part of being an adventure. You take the challenges for what they are. You don't just automatically collapse in a heap and say, oh, woe is me, life is over. No, you take it as a challenge rather than a problem. Simple shifts, right? Big, big, big deal. So a few more uh, uh, conventions, likewise, when using compound conceptions like trusting without trusting, it's recommended to hyphenate and capitalize, especially since most of these are a singular conception. The hyphenation serves to emphasize this and to assist us in thinking and using these as such, right? So trusting without trusting, it's one conception, that's why the hyphens, you know, and, and the, the capitalized says, man, this is something more than just well, what is trusting without trusting? Otherwise, it doesn't sort of make sense, right? What do you mean? You can't trust without trusting. It's all you're talking rubbish. But as a conception, it is a coexisting contradiction, and there's plenty of those in the world. Now it's like, oh, there's more meaning to this. Ah, okay, well, what does this mean? Well, like when I go on a first date, I trust without trusting, right? Uh, yes, I trust the person is sensible and rational and is not going to eat me and stuff like this, but only so far. Right after just one one date, I'm not going to commit to going into business with them and you know just uh, all sorts of stuff. No, I, I need a bit more before I give that more trust. So yes, I'm trusting, but I'm also not trusting both at the same time. They coexist, right? Trusting without trusting. Very powerful, very powerful, and very useful for first dates because so so often I see this with people. They, they have this either or. Either you trust the person or you don't. And then, you know, but sometimes it's not appropriate. You need more information, so you need to combine it, right? So very simple thing, but very powerful. All right. Uh, when needing to write a sentence, make the effort to do so as a quote, complete with quotation marks. Quote yourself thus. This is powerful emphasis for many reasons and will be covered in a session on quotes and quoting. Again, something specific that I do, but it's part of these conventions, your dictionary of power. You're learning to self-quote yourself as conceptions, right? You may have a different uh, file for your personal quotes, and I highly recommend you do this. It's an incredible thing to learn to quote yourself. Very, very powerful. And you can do it directly or indirectly. I prefer to do it indirectly, you know, like I did earlier with Biela. You know, this is me really quoting myself. But 
Uh, you leverage all sorts of things there. Uh, long story, but very powerful, very powerful. Keep your dictionary of power organized and constantly updated. Yes, I think I'm speaking to some people who maybe get a bit behind and lax on this. They'll probably know who I mean. Right? Keep it constantly updated. It's a crucially important part of you and your progress and growth. If you prefer taking notes by hand, make the effort to transfer your dictionary of power to an electronic format, as these allow for sorting and automatic expansion as as and when you add to the expanded understandings of your entries. So a simple technique that I like to use is just get a spreadsheet and you enter the power term into the cell and the cell right next door to it, uh, you can add the expanded understanding. Now, if you understand spreadsheets, you'll know you can type a lot of text into a cell and, the, and basically the cell can just stay small and the text can all be in there. So you don't actually make your list all big and long. You can still see the list in your, in your, your column A and column B, all the expanded understandings. But when you click on it, then it's going to pop up and you can see what's in there. So it's a very handy and convenient, simple way. But again, do it whichever way you want. I just personally like using the... Uh, the spreadsheets for this because it keeps my list compact and I can sort that list and, you know, add in a row anytime, add in new power conceptions and keep them sorted. I like to have it sorted. That's just me, you know, so, but anyway, however you do it, do it so that you can access it and that it's something that you can actually access with meaning and it's useful to you. And of course, sorting it, you'll see duplicate entries because Oh, that happens all the time um, that we come at things and you add it in again. doesn't matter. And you say, oh, I've got a duplicate. Let me combine the understandings and remove the duplicate. Very powerful, very powerful. But also you can leave the duplicate and say, wow, you know what? I, I finished the course now, the program of done way of impeccability or whatever. And I said, man, let me go look at my dictionary of power. Let me sort this. I haven't actually sorted it. I said, man, you know what? I've got a dozen different entries for trust. Hmm. Obviously, trust is a big deal to me. So there's many values to this. Many, many, many values, right? Yeah. All right. Quote here. Every entry in the dictionary of power is essentially a one conception philosophy. Yeah. That's that, that's that cabinet file I was talking about, right? Mourners. When we start to unpack mourners, Oh, mourners. Wow, wow. Okay. Everything starts to be mourners of life. We're seeing life as mourners. Learning as mourners. Adventure as mourners. Every, wow, wow, wow. I love mourners. I want more mourners. And with mourners, there's always more, but what you get is enough. Oh, whoa, whoa. Anyway, it carries on. So all of these things are one conception philosophies. Impeccability, patience, trust, all of them. Right? Big deal. Big deal to understand that. All right. We come to the next part of what we're doing. But you know what? It's already hour and a half. So I think I'm going to stop here at tasks and exercises because there's a whole bunch more coming. And otherwise, this is going to be very long. I didn't realize it was going to take this long, but uh, it's very cool. So, uh, you know, tasks and exercises, again, something that you do. You do, 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 do. So uh, I'll just end it here. Bina, is there any comments, questions? CJ, you got anything more popping into your head? Marcel, I want to hear from you. All right, so, so before we go this, Bina will bring up any questions there. But let me ask you, Marcel, because I like to do this. If you can, uh, please, I want to ask you for an overview, summation, takeaway of what we've been, say, we've been going through. In other words, what's, what's stuck with you? What's connected with you? What's been like, wow, this is cool. And I like this. This is important to me. This resonates to stuff that I already know that's important. That's emphasized it. I want to share this. Anyway, a summation, overview, takeaway. Please, please, if you wouldn't mind. All of, is it, import all of it is important. Yes. Okay. Well, that's yes. First thing we get that out of the way. Basically, this is it's tools on how to reframe your own existence up until now through primarily reflection. Yes. Okay, so this is very, very valuable. It shows yes. you exactly without going into all of the really crap stuff like trauma and yes. why you're so exactly and all of those things exactly it gives you this really really good exactly of, exactly if you do this you get that if you do this exactly it's very martial arts exactly. in its essence because you practice yes. your beat you get exactly your beat, you get. exactly exactly I, I when really you go and learn a new martial art you do not get into fixing being a victim that's not what martial arts is. They give you how to be self-confident, how to be empowered, how to have tools at your disposal. 
uh, you're not going there to fix being a victim. It doesn't really work. So this is a very cool point you bring up. It's fundamental to way of impeccability, and that's very specific there, that I'm not here to fix you, and I'm not interested in paying attention to fixing you. Why not? Because of emphasis. If we just focused on your problems, all we're doing is we're training the brain to be focused on problems and, and what's broken. No, much rather focus on what you can replace it with and it takes care of the problem automatically. The example that I typically use here is people teach their kids, say, do not steal, do not steal. Now, I was a good kid and I didn't ever steal, right? And people say, what do you mean? You never shoplifted? No, never. Never even thought of it, right? But did that thing, I mean, I really took not stealing very seriously. It was a big deal for me, right? That's how I grew up. I mean, none of my friends did either, just the culture at the time. But this learning to not steal, did that teach me to be kind, considerate, generous, thoughtful, to perspective shift, to think things through, to be impeccable, to trust, to have patience? No, didn't teach me any of those things, right? However, if I had been taught to be kind, generous, courteous, considerate, thoughtful, etc., how could I possibly steal? Not possible, right? So learning the positive takes care of the negative, but taking, uh, learning the negative does not necessarily mean the positive comes along with it. Very profound understanding. Very, very, very profound understanding. So when we are looking to fix our problems, say, what can I replace it with that will automatically take care of this problem? So I have self-doubt, for instance. I'm insecure. I don't have confidence. Well, let me learn how to use tools. Let me learn how to use tools. Okay. All the tools of being. If I know how to use the tools, wow, I've got confidence automatically. I've got stuff to do. I know how to deal with stuff. Right? So my doubts, my self-confidence all automatically come. I'm automatically taking care of the problem through replacement. Way of impeccability is exactly that. It's a toolbox for deliberate living. you learning through replacement. Very, very powerful. Very powerful. So great, great takeaway on that. Great takeaway. Great, great, wonderful takeaway. Powerful. Takeaways are very, very, very powerful. Very, very powerful. Now, to do a takeaway on what I've just said is actually very difficult. Why? Because I've shared so much and lots of very potent things. Each each slide has lots of moreness into it. So just be aware that sometimes that overview takeaway is going to give you an aggregate and an average. Sometimes you have to go and get specific and make it internal for you so that you can get the real nitty-gritty, the real details, right? It's like me sh showing you my actual toolbox full of tools and say, yeah, you go, it's a toolbox. Ah, you, know, you need to actually pay attention to each and every tool so that you know how to use them. That's very powerful, very powerful. All right, Magic Bina, anything from comments? Yes, uh, Sher says that, yes, it is actually like martial arts because uh, this is how we learn and yeah. this is what we do. Uh, I just want to share something because uh, it's please, so please. profound what you please. shared, uh, Sil, please. because when please. I joined this uh, way of impeccability, I was, my mind was like like a dumpster like where everything was dumb i knew a lot of stuff but it was not connected it was not organized so when when Sil says that okay first thing you're not broken second thing that okay it's your own moreness what you are going to explore and be connected with that was like really a aha moment for me because yes. i knew a lot of stuff but how to make sense out of it was not working for me Yes. So everything was there. And that was like a super leverage for my self-trust. I don't need any self-confidence course or anything at all. Just that term that, okay, yes, you have already, already, you have all these things. Yeah. Like really? Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. it all started making yeah. sense. Yeah. That was so brilliant. Yeah. So brilliant. CJ yeah. wants to take the course still. And he says, because, ah, very, uh, good. very good. Very good. Very good. Much very better good. than very sure. Good. So very yes. Good. Yes, yes. Uh, you're more than welcome, CJ. You're more than welcome. Um, you know, and, and again, all the things we're doing now are what you'll be doing as how you take the course. This is what's important. Mostly when this is what I'm really trying to share with participants of the group. It's not about, yes, come and do wave impeccability. Of course, I love you to do wave impeccability. I think wave impeccability is just a, a phenomenal thing. And I'm not just because it's my program, because I see how it changes people and how they're out. But it doesn't matter. These things that I'm doing, you need to know in terms of whatever you're doing to make it effective and useful. If you don't do these things, you're not going to get the same value. I mean, you can do a course, and I have lots of friends. They've done tons of courses. Have they changed? No, they keep looking for the next course because they don't do these things. 
right? So how you do a course is more important than the course material itself. Not that the course material isn't important, but the how is more important, right? So really all of what I'm sharing now are tools with which you learn to make other tools. Right, that's what wave impeccability is. It's not just learning the tools itself, but you're learning tool making, and that's a whole different way of being. Right, so I can create the tool as necessary on the spot as appropriate. And what a skill, right, Marcel, to have the ability to actually create your tool on demand. Holy moly! You said it. You said it. You said it perfectly in the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Learning how to learn. And exactly. Teaching exactly. how to learn. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Man, I'm pleased you came on, Marcel. I'm pleased you came on. I'm pleased you came on. Thank you. Thank wonderful. You wonderful. Me. Thank you, Bina, for the share. What about something uh, else? Uh, Anything, uh, Bina? Yes. No, thank you so much. And thank you so much, Marcel, because uh, you bring a lot of moreness, of course, because you were the way you were sharing and asking questions, that was really helpful. So thank you Not so much. Not a quiet moreness. Yes. Yeah. Now, I want you, you, I, that you, you, Marcel steals the words right out of my mouth. Now, all right. So just for anybody listening, right? Uh, in this particular instance here, yes, you might say, Mansell, you were doing all the talking. I didn't hear enough from Marcel. It's the nature of the circumstance, yes, that that uh, if I was actually, we were doing a session and this was Marcel's time, uh, it would be completely reversed. Marcel would be the one sharing and I'd be the one listening. Um, it's just the nature yes. of the circumstance. I have material I need to share. Marcel is here to give me pertinence and relevance and focus and, you know, yeah, what, okay, does this connect in this? And, you know, by paying attention to, I can see, okay, and I can adapt and shift. So it helps me to make stuff more pertinent and relevant. Um, but just to be aware, uh, it's not that I don't pay attention to people and I'm minimizing myself, not in the least, not in the least, just the nature of the circumstance. All right, so I, I loved you being here, Marcel, really helps me a lot. And yes, I'd really like to hear more from you, but that's for another live. We can do a live together where we say, um, let's hear what Marcel is all about, because obviously anybody paying attention will hear what Bina just said. There's evidently tons of mourners going on with Marcel. Yes, we didn't get to hear what all that mourners is about, but it's very obvious, tons of mourners going on there, right? Right, Mona yes, and Marcel? I'm more than happy to be here too. Yes. Yeah, it's very obviously oh, there. So, thank you. Yeah, another well, time. Sometimes another time. saying nothing is saying something. Exactly. Saying something exactly. Is saying nothing. exactly. Exactly. To me, you what when you're not saying I hear tons, and this is I have a whole program on hearing beyond what's said, hearing what's not said. It's a very sophisticated program. It's called hearing and helping. I love this program. Uh, it's a huge program, but man, especially for coaches, if you want to coach, even if you are coaching, uh, especially if you are coaching, this will really, really, really help your coaching profoundly. It's a very big deal to hear this beyond us. So your silence for me or not speaking, I hear why, because I see you paying attention. I see how you're paying attention. I see how it's connecting, how you're processing, et cetera, et cetera. I, you know, tons of things that I hear or see without you saying anything. So just be aware also people, especially for those that aren't uh, necessarily so honest and self-honest, be aware that you say a hell of a lot more than you say, think you say. Yeah, most people don't realize this, that they are communicating much more than they think they say. Yeah, much, much more. Very powerful, very powerful. And, you know, that's actually when you get into coaching, this becomes an ethical issue, it becomes an influence. We have to be very mindful of this so that hearing and helping goes into all these nuanced things about sharing, communicating, coaching, etc. Very powerful stuff. All right. And, and of course, that coach, that course isn't just for coaches. When you can coach yourself, that's really what it's geared to be. And when you can get coaching from the universe, oh my goodness, now, now it blows, it goes into another, another dimension. Very cool, very cool. All right, uh, anything else, Spina, before we go? Yes, CJ is again asking, what is moreness? Uh, for that, CJ, you have to come and join the session. Uh, no, 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 no. Sorry, I'm not going to be lazy. You want to know what moreness <laughs> is, CJ? You write down what you think moreness is or could possibly be what does mourners mean to you uh, so in other words i'm asking you to figure it out to to just create just imagine what it could be if you start writing out what mourners means to you what you think it could mean might mean uh, and all this you're going to actually then figure out what mourners is it's a wonderful thing so do it yourself yes. and you'll be surprised now we can you know when you do come on 
we can go over what you've written. And of course, part of impeccability is to check and test and self-prove to yourself. We're going to get to that. You know, but anyway, then you can get that feedback and that verification. But first, do it yourself. Much more potent. Much, much more potent. So it's a great question. What is Mornus? Mornus is magic. Mornus is awesome. Mornus is what adds to us. Mornus is what fulfills. I know, yeah, I'm telling you what it is now. All right, never mind. I gotta stop. I gotta stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. So Ernest, just when when I get so asked earnest questions, by the way, just for me, just anybody out there. Uh, when you ask me an earnest question, it does something to my brain, to my being. My whole system is set up to respond to earnest questions. And when you ask me an earnest question, more comes out of me than I could access on my own. So you actually have a power over me with earnest questions. Yeah. So just be aware of that. Okay. Yeah, okay. Fun. Thank you, Sil. Thank you, Marcel. Yes. yes. Brilliant. Thank you, All everyone right. so, who joins us. So, Marcel, don't, don't, don't go away. I'm going to end the live and end the uh, the recording. So, so don't go away. Uh, stay on Zoom. Stay on Zoom.